Hi everybody. Um, I hope everybody's doing well in this time of uh, crisis or whatever. You're hunkering down, doing all good stuff. So, for those of you who don't know, I am a professional baker at Walt Disney World. And a lot of people keep asking me to do baking videos, tutorials, whatever. So I figured, because I have all this extra time on my hands, uh, now's a good time as any. So today, we're going to start with something a little bit uh, different than you may be uh, used to or uh, you may be thinking for yourself. Uh, for many of us, we do have uh, fur babies. We have three. And on occasion, I make them homemade dog treats. Um, I found a very simple, easy recipe that they absolutely go crazy for. Very simple ingredients. I'm going to list all the ingredients and the recipe and everything uh, in the description of this video. Um, so if you don't get it while you're following along, you can look it up later. It's, again, extremely easy. So what you're going to need is a few things, of course, um, if you can find it right now. If not, Amazon seems to be pretty good at still having supplies. It just may take a hot minute to get to your house. Um, so what you're going to need is some whole wheat flour. Um, this is the uh, kind I'm using right now. Um, just picked it up from Publix. Um, you're going to need some bacon powder. You're going to need you some honey. Okay, Publix brand. We love our Publix. Uh, and then some creamy peanut butter, um, again, uh, and, and an egg. So if you want to go like super healthy, you're super health conscious, whatever, you can choose all the organic stuff and everything like that. Um, so it doesn't matter uh, what you get, what you want to buy, whatever. <laughs> Will's being a, a, anyway. So we're going to start. So what, we're, what you're going to need is you're going to need two and a half cups of the flour. So just get you your little measuring cups and get you two. One. Two. And a half cups of your whole wheat flour right into your mixing bowl. Now I'm going to use a stand mixer because I'm bougie like that. Um, if you don't have a stand mixer, of course you can use a handheld mixer. Um, you can mix this by hand, um, which is harder. Uh, <laughs> it takes a little bit more time and effort. So if you are on the struggle bus, you may have to do that. Otherwise, get you a stand mixer. They're fabulous. They will save you uh, all kinds of time. and. Um, You'll get to bake and all kinds of fun stuff with them. Okay, so that was our flour. We're going to move on to our baking powder. Uh, so one teaspoon baking powder, if I can open it. And this is a, a, a new container, so apparently I haven't used this one yet. So anyway, so one even teaspoon of our baking powder. Wonderful. And then, and this is usually when the dogs come and see me because I need one cup of my peanut butter. And they can smell this stuff a mile away. I don't know what it is. Dogs and peanut butter, it, it's like crack. I'm just saying. That's all I'm just going to say. It's, it's, it's creamy crack is what it is. Take it as you will. So, just going to take my peanut butter. And I like to do the peanut butter after the flour in my measuring cup because the flour helps. Uh, keeping the peanut butter from sticking as much. I also have uh, these silicone measuring cups, so that helps too. But we're just going to do like that. Very, very easy, very simple. Pop it into our our bowl. Lovely. Oh, see, I got a visitor right now. Miss Sherry came to see me because she can smell smell the peanut butter, can't you, Miss Sherry? Sherry is number three in our fur baby family. She is a Great Dane. She's black. Her actual name is uh, the Sheriff of Nottingham. We call her Sherry for short. Um, of course, if you see her on the streets, her name is Queen of the Motherfucking Universe, the Turd, because she's the Turd, and that gives her street cred. So anyway, you want some of this? Look, see, they, they just 
peanut butter. It's crack. I'm telling you. They just, you just slop it up like newspaper. So anyway, so that's the peanut butter. And that's the part I think that they, they absolutely love in this recipe. Okay, so now we need uh, two tablespoons of honey. And again, I mean, if you want to get local honey, organic honey, you know, depending on how bougie you are, uh, what brand you like, whatever, it doesn't matter. I'm making a mess, but that's okay. Um, so two tablespoons of honey. We're just gonna... And Sherry is trying to get another lick because she still smells the peanut butter. They love peanut butter. Like, it's crazy how, how much they just, oh, it's just a great treat for them. And, you know, if you get a good brand that doesn't have all the additives and extras, like, like a natural peanut butter or as close to natural as possible, um, it's great. It's wonderful. And they love it. Okay, so that's our honey. Put that away. I'm done with that. And then I need an egg, so I forgot to get my egg out in my preparations. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of all my little dishes over here. Because we're going to need this space in a minute. Let me roll this out. So let me get my, my egg. I'll be right back. Don't you move. Alright, so one egg. Just crack it right into your mixing bowl. There we go. That there for right now. So we got all of our ingredients in our mixing bowl. I'm going to use my stand mixer. Put it right, right on the mixer, just like that. Very simple, easy. Use your beater attachment for this. Bring it up, and we're going to mix it so everything is combined. All right, everybody, sorry about that. So I forgot also, you need one cup of water in this recipe. So put the cup of water in here, and now we're gonna, we're gonna mix it uh, a little bit more, get everything to come together, so our dough uh, starts to form. Again, these, these dogs, are, they're circling. They, they know, they know what's going on. They, they can sense it from like 500 miles away, it's crazy. So we're going to mix it. It just takes a few minutes, depending. If you have a stand mixer, I just stand here and mix it for a few minutes and wash it off. All my dough kind of comes together and uh, creates a nice uh, dough ball. Like, you don't mix it too much because then it's, it's, uh, it's too tight. I think that's good. Show you what I what I got here. Oh yes, I can, I can smell the peanut butter, that's for sure. Put that in our sink. So before I get this out, I have a wonderful mat I use. These, these are fabulous. They are slip mats. Um, they are made of this material, you put it down, you can do cookies and doughs and all kinds of stuff and they don't stick and they're easy to clean and you don't have to mess your whole countertop or anything. They're amazing. I suggest uh, if you do a lot of baking or anything like that, um, you definitely invest in one of these. It's a good investment. Um, so here's our dough. I may flip down our camera a little bit. but. This is what my dough looks like right now. It's a nice ball, very, very doughy, cookie. Let me see if I can, I can fix our, our camera angle. There we go. Okay, so here we go. We got this low, and I, I like to give it a little bit of a, some kneading, so that it all kind of will come together. Try not to shake the camera over so you don't fall over on me. 
Um, you can put a little bit of flour on your rolling pin or whatever you want. Um, this is usually pretty, um, pretty non-stick, this recipe, and I usually don't have to worry about that quite so much, which is nice. Um, my stuff is moving all over the place here. I'm going to roll it out to roughly uh, the one quarter thickness um, cookie, because, I mean, you're making cookies, is what you're making. Um, it is a dog biscuit. Um, so, but the, the concept, the, the, uh, everything else, like as if you were making a cookie still applies. So with the rolling procedures and the thickness that you want, um, now if you do, I have found that if you roll it too thin, it will still bake. It'll still be a nice little biscuit treat for them. Um, just remember that when you're baking, your baking time is going to be a lot shorter because your dough is not as thick. Um, I do find if you leave it a decent thickness, quarter inch thickness is pretty good. Um, uh, if you can't eyeball it, of course, uh, just get your ruler out real quick and check it. Um, not a big deal. Um, I have a fun little dog biscuit cookie cutter. That I like to use. Um, that's more for me. I mean, they probably don't care what shape it's in. And I just go around and I cut out my biscuits and just you know, you wanna you wanna do it as close as possible to each piece. So you utilize as much dough as you can. Um, whatever you don't use, we're gonna we're gonna reuse. Um, the thing is, you don't want to, uh, most cookie doughs, see how easy that comes up? Uh, most cookie doughs, you don't want to keep kneading over and over again because you're kneading down your dough. And the first set of cookies you get will be nice and fluffy, um, depending on the cookie dough. But... As you keep kneading and reusing your dough, uh, you're breaking down, you're basically flattening out your cookie. So it's it's just gonna it's gonna keep going, keep going, keep going. Do you just you end up with a batch of cookies that just are not they're not pretty, they're not you know they probably still taste okay, but they don't have that nice you know fluff to them. They don't have that nice uh, cookie consistency. So uh, the least amount of times that you can work your dough, the better. So just kind of keep that in mind. Even with these, I mean, you know, I was like, oh, they're for, they're just for dogs. Like, who cares, right? I mean, people care about their dogs. We care about ours. You should care about yours. Um, if you don't have dogs, I don't know why you're watching this video. Maybe you're just bored, which is fine. Um... <laughs> But yeah, so I'm just going to do two more to finish this pan so I can put my test batch in because just like any good baker, you always have your first kind of test batch. Now, if you're not confident about it, I want to do a full batch, a full tray, um, just to see how they come out, how long they take. Um, if you are a competent baker, you know, you can do a full, a full tray. So that's what they look like before they bake. Um, little dog biscuits, real cute. I'm going to throw in my oven. I'm going to start mine at the 12 minute mark, um, just because, just because you don't know, you just never know. Um, all ovens are different, um, depending on your altitude, where you live could be different. Um, it's all kinds of stuff. So I'm just going to finish what I've started with this one. I've got some uh, pans with parchment on them already, ready to go. We're just going to keep trucking along here. And I'm just going to finish up real quick so I can get and the dogs are just, they're just in here. They're, they're waiting. Like, they know 
they know what's coming. Like they can smell it, they know the smell, they know the deliciousness of these treats. Like, I mean, I've tried one <laughs> and they're not something I would, you know, I would get if they were for sale in a grocery store for humans. Um, but the dogs go nuts for these every time. I mean, they salivate. We put them in a, in a plastic container, um, has a little, you know, pop top lid to it. If they hear that container, um, they hear that lid, they, they come running. They know. They're like, oh, the treats are opening. I'm gonna get me a little some a little something something. That's gonna be fabulous. Um, funny thing though is we have several of those containers that we use for various uh, things like leftovers and whatever. And these these dogs think that oh that's our treat container. So again, I'm just, I'm re-kneading what I had left over. So I'm going to roll it again. And you can see, like, this dough, it's, it's very uh, non-stick, which is nice. I'm going to kind of flip it over, roll it out a little bit more. Like I said, I mean, if you, if you can eyeball your thickness, wonderful. If you can't, just get you a ruler out uh, and just ch you know check it whatever you can always kind of re-roll it if you went too thin um, again you can bake them um, a lot thinner you'll definitely get more biscuits out of it um, just remember to adjust your bake time your bake time will not be as long as if you do a thicker biscuit um, I mean, I don't know if it really matters as far as taste, if it's thicker or not. Um, like I said, I tried, <laughs> I tried one, and they were not my liking at all. So I'm going to going to finish this, and then hopefully our. Our test batch will be out and I will be able to show you how wonderful they are and show you how much the dogs really love them. So, see you in just a little bit. Alright everybody, so our first batch, our test batch, came out of the oven and it looked so good. Like look at these, look at these little cute little dog biscuits, aren't they just fantabulous like and I'm telling you these dogs go crazy for see look you can see the nose you can see the nose look at it I mean they go crazy for these things I don't know what it is I mean it's super simple ingredients super quick super easy um, something you can do um, especially now that most of us have a lot of spare time on our hands so if you want to make something you got some fur babies at home maybe you have a neighbor that has some you know, you, you want to just kind of spread the love. I know we're supposed to be keeping our distances at this time and everything, but this is something quick and easy you can make, um, provided you can find the ingredients at the store or have them shipped to you like on Amazon or something. Um, very quick, very easy. Um, so until the next video, uh, happy baking from your baking queen, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!